still suffering from it. Like she had a touch of it when we left and she thought she was feeling better, but then after driving her around from Gettysburg for four days, she had it. She, she, had it. Yeah, she, was, she was regretting that. I know, I felt awful. Yeah, because um, Audrina came. Oh, we got a new thing we brought too. Yeah, she was to looking at that, that, that little desk. desk. Yeah, you turn it. On, and then there's different plates. She went with that for a good hour. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, well, my daughter in law is a long hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's big, and we don't really have to move. Yeah. And they don't have the room in their house yeah. either, and especially now with Christmas coming. So yeah. So we're just bringing the church. Yeah. When the kids are here, they can play with us. Yeah. So that's what we did. That's good. I'm glad you liked it, huh? So, Greg, was there anything, was Chip just his eye, or was there anything in particular, or just pretty fun? Just pretty fun. Okay, that's fine. I just know if there's anything in particular. Is that what? No, 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 that's Chip. That would not be helpful for him. Lori? What's up? Thanksgiving go good? Go well. <laughs> what did you do? We ended up having the foot because we couldn't. Bobby only has one hand. Yeah, I know, right. That's... And my sister has no strength. Can't even use a scoop as a scoop, right? He's got to get like uh, Edward Scissor's hands. Yeah, we ended up doing this setting first on the floor. Okay. That is all. Okay. We just a bit of hit on you. That was hilarious. I was like, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 At the temple, uh, at the Luxury Play Temple. And the, and the, and the, and the rabbi said, No, we can't do it. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Oh, yeah. And so they said, We'll postpone it until November, and then we should go back to the Senate and all that stuff. And they said, Well, I'll have to do that. Who did? Oh, it did. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It was so inspiring. Was you know, that oh, first piece yeah. was just, the there was so <laughs> much quiet in it, so much reflect. It was just, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just such a powerful mood piece. And it was just uh, devastating. Oh. But Joshua, then Joshua Bell came out for two pieces of metals and pieces of love. Another. Uh, uh, and then they end up to make Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. Well, well we went on, on light up night. And you could, we actually walked in there and we're like, nope. Because it was literally, we were just like this. You could be. One bracelet. One shot. Yeah, we bought a lot of other stuff. Yeah, a Get a little small, I think, That's after small. this time. We got nice, different things. Yeah, yeah we're going to we're, go. Are, is that open during just like weekends or is it open night? I think it's during the weekend. Well, okay. she ran herself, but I see it getting shot. Right, Muriel. Just came out with a little tiny bit of the tree. Progressive and Oh, I guess that means it's time. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm glad that you found where we're at. Yes, our, our furnace is problematic. It needs prayer. So we do have a fellow coming in. He says that he's convinced it's an electrical problem, not a furnace problem. And he will be coming this week. That is, uh, that is Jose. He's, uh, you, you, many of you know uh, Peggy, his wife, uh, who worships mostly at her later service. But she does come here quite often. To the earlier service, but her husband Jose is a uh, is a specialist with this. He's a uh, so he's going to come down, and take a look at it, and try to track where the electrical problem is, and hopefully get it up and running. Problem is, we can get it running for maybe two hours, and then it clicks off. In two hours, it can get up. It was only thirty some degrees in the sanctuary this morning. I got it up to fifty about fifteen minutes ago. I fear, like I said, I have a Beth. 
Uh, my, my Beth is my, uh, is my uh, person I think of. I think if Beth is uncomfortable in this, we're not going to be worshiping up there. So uh, I just don't think, uh, I mean, 50 might be great for a football game, but uh, I don't think y'all want to come down for that for worship. So we'll be here today, and hopefully, he said this week, he'll be out and uh, track down what that problem is. Okay. Um, as far as other announcements go, I realize I am just so behind the eight ball here. We got to get trees up, right? Sanctuary. We got to get uh, we got to get ready. Advent begins next week, and so I would ask if uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, again, spur of the moment. Are folks available? Say ten o'clock this coming Saturday. Yes? No? no. Nobody is. is we can wait another week. Oh, that's right. We can't come. Well, there you go. The kids are coming in. Bring the um, kids. Or we can do it on a Tuesday night. We can maybe, we can maybe even do a Tuesday. Are, are you folks going to be here Tuesday? Yeah. So maybe we can do it Tuesday at 6. Let's do it Tuesday at 6 before the worship. And that would be great. I will have a bunch of other people. We'll Terry here and Johnny here and a bunch of other folks. So 6 o'clock Tuesday, we'll start setting up the sanctuary and get ready for Advent. Okay? Ooh. Any other announcements? Reminder that... Yes. The dinner. Lunch. Dinner. A couple of weeks. That's the second okay. week in December. Gotcha. We have to talk about that because you're a board member. The I board know. That's in charge of that. Did I miss something? So, <laughs> no, you didn't miss anything. Oh, yeah. But we have to talk about what the menu is and get yes. that set up and get it ready to go. Uh, all we have is, yes, we're going to do it that day, but we haven't talked about anything. Okay, else. I think that's what I thought. All right. Okay, so that's it. Um, we do have Sunday school next week. And then we also have the youth group again this week. So we get that resuming at Wednesday at 7. That should be it. Busy week, though. Okay. Let us prepare our hearts for worship today. We invite you to stand. We are actually going to turn to normally page 94, Confession of Forgiveness. Time page is still over. And we are going to do the Thanksgiving for baptism today. That's just a page or two over, 97. Thank you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Amen. So joined to Christ in the waters of holy baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us therefore give thanks for the gift of holy baptism this day. We give you thanks, O oh God. For we know that in the beginning, your Holy Spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life and light, in which you took delight. It is through the waters and the flood that you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son John was Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And it is by the water and your word that you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains us, that sustains all life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we ask you would shower us this day with your Holy Spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be honor, glory, and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together our hymn. Today, this again is Christ the King Sunday. It means it's the last Sunday of our church year. And so we celebrate Christ who is Lord of all. So crown him with many crowns.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
let us read responsibly the 95th Psalm. We read through the seventh verse. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout our joy to the Lord of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving. And raise, raise a loud shout to the Lord with songs. For you, Lord, are great God, a great God. And a great ruler above all gods. In your hands are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The, the sea is yours, for you made it. And your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Lord. The Lord is our God, and we are his people, the people of his pasture, the sheep of God's own hand. Oh, that today we would hear our God's voice. King Sonny's found the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, my Lord. Lord. So Jesus continued his teaching of his disciples and those followers, those followers of him. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne, he will sit on his throne of glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a sheep, a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep at his right hand, the goats to the left. The king will say to those at the right hand, Come, you are blessed by my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And the righteous will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and say, gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw that you were sick or in prison and visited with you? And the king answered them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it one to the least of these my members, you did it of uh, my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those of the left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me, enter into eternal fire, prepared by the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not visit with me. And they said to him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And he answer them, truly I tell you, as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Christ. Christ. Heavenly Father, bless this word today that we might be inspired by your presence. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to be seated. There is a handout in your bulletin today for this, the last Sunday of the church year. This is kind of an exciting time. We get into this wondrous holy season. Of course, we had, uh, my, my family, of course, we just start celebrating Halloween and before that, the whole month of October, getting ready for that. And then, of course, Thanksgiving. And now we've got... Christ the King, and that beckons this next new year that starts next year with, with the first Sunday in Advent, our preparation for Christmas. Boy, the seasons fly, but I hope you do take the time to enjoy them because it's just a wondrous time of year. And uh, today we're going to end with a lesson for our final Sunday of this church year with a lesson about generosity that Jesus tells about the sheep and the goats, the right and left, and you heard again why they were separated into two. But before we get there, a little bit of background. Remember, the lessons this week have all been, or the last few weeks, have all been Jesus teaching to his disciples and to those followers of his after the scribes and the Pharisees kind of had their fill of him. He's in Jerusalem. It's right before he was turned over uh, to be executed and uh, turned over to death. 
The scribes and the Pharisees had done everything they could to discredit Jesus. They have failed on that account. And the uh, common people are on Jesus' side. So the scribes and the Pharisees figured out a way and went to plot how they were going to kill him. And so they had a limited amount of, uh, of time to prepare for his death because guess what was just around the corner? Passover, right. So they had to put him to get death before that Passover. They only had a matter of days before that happened. So all of Jesus' words of condemnation that we've heard these last few weeks, I want you to keep them in perspective. They are targeting and targeting the scribes and the Pharisees and religious leaders who use their position, their power, to impose themselves upon other people for their status, for whatever it is, whatever benefit they might gain. The problem that I have with churches, oftentimes we hear this lesson, and most churches pound their pulpits and say, that's all the people who don't come to church on every single Sunday. Jesus never treated people like that. Jesus was never unkind to people who were struggling, to people who were not believers. Jesus was critical only of religious leaders, people who had faith, but used their relationship with God in order to to impose themselves or to gain position or power or wealth in some way. So I want you to keep that in mind with the sheep and goats today. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Right? Well, if you're a follower of Jesus, you hope to be a sheep. But if you're a religious leader like me, you might be a goat. So we're going to find this out. We have to throw ourselves at God's mercy and figure this out. Then who are the faithful? The faithful disciple is the person, Jesus says, who uses their daily blessings to be a blessing. And they don't even think about it. Because notice, they don't bless other people to get credit for it, to get their names in the bulletin, to get a pat on the back. They don't bless other people in hopes that they'll do good works to get to heaven. They don't, it's just in their nature. They just see people are need and they help them without considering the cost or calculating its personal benefit to them. But the unfaithful people, who are they? They're the scribes and the Pharisees. Keep that in mind again. Jesus is not referring to his followers or people who are not following him. He's not referring to the people who are not church members. There are people who aren't going to church every single Sunday. You want to know why? Because they've been hurt by churches. Those churches are going to be accountable for that, right? Those pastors are going to be accountable for that. Jesus is never harsh on those folks who aren't going to church every Sunday, okay? He looks at them and says, they're just sheep without a shepherd. It makes them sad because their life could be better. But he understands that the religious leadership of the synagogue has let these people down. So these unfaithful, again, are the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leadership. Again, it's a warning to those who claim to be followers of God, but hoard the benefits of their position and power for themselves, because such a behavior is contrary to one who is a disciple of Jesus Christ. The scribes and the Pharisees have known the generosity of God, and yet remain unmoved by the generosity of God. It's like somebody who receives a blessing every single day. It's like, uh, uh, you know, just want to keep uh, 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 collecting wealth around themselves, but they never, ever, ever take the time to say thank you and be a blessing with what they've received. The giving of the scribes and the Pharisees was <coughs> They only gave if they got credit for it, if they were seen doing it, and if somehow it earned them something from God. So they were blaming. Did you notice they blamed God for their circumstance? They said, well, God, how could we have known that you were the poor person or the sick person? And Jesus said, good grief, are you kidding me? Right? Anybody. You know, so they only wanted to give, if they were going to get credit for it, if God was watching. Well, God was watching, and they weren't using their blessings to be a blessing to other people. The scribes and the Pharisees operated by legalisms. They wanted to determine what were the limits of their responsibilities rather by love. Love has no boundaries. 
in one sense. It does. I mean, that's not entirely true. There are people who will abuse that, and you do not have a responsibility to continue to give and give and give to people who are going to abuse your generosity. So that's not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about is love doesn't calculate the cost. It just takes a look at somebody in need and says, I want to give. You know, uh, we still, behind those boards, of course, we have a lot of food and we're collecting more food and that's fantastic and I just love it. But you know, I've been asked one time, how do you know whether somebody is sincere when they come to the church and ask for food? I don't know. Some people want food because that extends their budget and then they can go buy their toys. Maybe. It happens. There are some people who come who are sincere. I just have, I'm going to tell you a story because this is what you folks have done. I get to see it. You don't get to see it. I wish you could see these, these stories. I had a man who called me from Clareton, heard that our food, our, well, we are a church that gives away food. He's like, I, my family needs some food for, for th Thanksgiving. I'm like, I, I can't start delivering out to Clareton. I just can't do that. And his wife said, my husband will be there like at 3 o'clock. Okay, so I set a time 3 o'clock on, on Wednesday. Uh, he got here at 1.30. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding. It's a good thing I was here because I was delivering food to other folks and so forth. And so they were very glad, I mean, I did, to make the effort. And he came out here and I said, well, why don't you bring your car up here by the door at the side? And he looked at me and said, I don't have a car. What do you mean? He took a bus. You took a bus from, it took him an hour, probably 20 minutes, hour and a half to get from Clarendon to East Pittsburgh because he needed food for Thanksgiving for his family. I'm like, how are you going to get this home? He said, well, I set aside a few bucks. I'm hoping I can get an Uber <laughs> or something like that. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. The man, by the way, could barely walk. He's 35 years of age, give or take, I'm guessing. He is, uh, his kidneys are damaged, destroyed because of diabetes. So he actually had one of those monitors on there. He was getting, you know, uh, he was uh, getting his blood, you know, he's getting a blood transfusion every other day. And he's got, are you ready for this? Five kids. Three are of his wife's kids. One is his child. And then he's got another one with them. And they're just trying to do the best they can to put food on the table for their kids. Do you think this guy was lying to me about needing food? Aren't you glad that we were here to help them? I just looked at that. It was such a blessing to be able to help. But we didn't do it to get a pat on the back or we weren't calculating this. I can't always tell whether people are sincere or not, but there sure seemed like this man needed some help. Yes, I actually found out because I asked him, how would you declare it? I helped his sister out before. That's how I, he found out. And so he was so desperate and she said, hey, there's a guy in East Pittsburgh. This church will help you. That's just fantastic. But you don't do it to get the credit for it. You just do it because you know people need to be blessed. You need help. This is what love does. So I am thanking all of you for your love. All those who packed all these boxes and brought all that food. You are sending Jesus in the household of that man in Clarendon. We're just hoping he hears clearly that he's loved. So what does this mean for us today? Here's what a disciple does. A disciple is not a person who will be judged by their knowledge. So in other words, you're not going to be, Jesus isn't going to take the Bible and, and say to you, do you understand everything in the Bible? Because if you don't, you're, pff, there's no place in my kingdom. Shoo, good thing, because I don't understand everything in the Bible, okay? You're not judged by your knowledge of the Bible. You're not judged by the wealth that you amass. Now, in that day, in Jesus' day, people actually thought that was true. You will be judged by your generosity. Now, I want to be clear. Remember how last week I told you that a person who gives away, who makes a million dollars a year and gives away $100,000 is not very generous compared to the person who makes $20,000 and gives away $2,000. Not even close. I said to you, that wealthy person who makes a million dollars a year has to give away $982,000 to be as generous as that 
person who makes $20,000 and gives away $2,000, right? That's true generosity. It is in the nature of God to be absurdly generous. It is not measured by amount. It's measured by what we have and how generous we are, what we have. It's not just financial giving. It's our time. It's our, it's our care. It's our love. Sometimes it's just that hug that you give to somebody that is the most important thing that you can do for somebody that day. Disciples are so transformed by the generosity of God that they are generous without a desire to be recognized for what it is they've done. They don't go and pat themselves on the back for it. Disciples are not cognizant that they're even doing something that is contrary to the selfish nature of humanity. They just love people. Disciples give of their time, their finances, through acts of mercy and kindness, just because it's in our nature, as we know how much we've been loved by God. So I'm going to end with a story and talk about a generous person. This was written in a book by a guy named uh, Brian Kluth who wrote a book called The 40 Day Spiritual Journey to a More Generous Life. It's a very, just a wonderful little vignette in there about how we can grow our generosity and grow our relationship with God. But he, he talks about going to Africa and meeting a Christian there. And when he met this, this one man, uh, he was just awed by this guy. He was talking to this man. He's a father of six. He made $10 a month. Even in parts of Africa, that doesn't go very far. Ten bucks doesn't go anywhere. And this man kept seeing all these children going blind because of, honestly, something in the United States that wouldn't be a problem. All it would take was just a few eye drops. It cost 50 cents, and these kids would have not lost their sight. And he just said, the man just said, I just prayed to God, I prayed to God, I prayed to God that God would send some rich person here who would who would give uh, uh, money so that we could cure these kids of this disease and they could get the eye drops that they needed. And then he and his wife prayed about it and they said, why can't we give? He makes $10 a month. It costs 50 cents. It doesn't seem like a big deal. But if that's all you got is $10 a month, that's a big deal. But he and his wife prayed about it and said, we're going to help one child every month. And after seven years, I have this fear. What is it? Uh, after seven years, how many did I have this written down? I don't see. Well, you'd have to do the math there. <laughs> 84 children. That's what it is. 84 children in seven years of giving 50 cents, he and his wife, every single day, saved the eyesight of 84 kids. Now, that's generosity, right? What a spectacular thing. It doesn't have to necessarily be a big splash. He didn't do it to get credit. He did it because God gave him a heart for these kids. So this is the season of generosity. I'm encouraging you, starting with the Advent season, to start praying about how God has called you to put the love of God in action through generous, kindness, kind acts. For those around you, how has God called you to be a blessing? Because God has been a blessing to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for the generosity of God. He loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. Didn't even withhold back that most precious thing. So God, a true follower, will be so touched and transformed by this that we don't consider the cost. But we look at who it is that you've placed in our life that we can, we can help. Honestly, it's, it's very likely the person is sitting right in front of us. And maybe we can do something about their need. We don't have to, to it's, it's not necessarily about giving money to the church. It's about helping that person across the street who maybe needs a helping hand, maybe needs their garbage taken out once a week because they're just grown a little bit weary and, and their bodies are, are, are just weak. Maybe it's helping the person go and shopping once a month for them to get them their groceries. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's shoveling their walk and not expecting anything in return. So God, help us to keep our eyes open for those opportunities to be generous, not just with our financial resources, but with our hands, with our hearts, with our love. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us stand and sing our hymn of the day, blessing and honor. This uh, is going to be a little bit different experience for you today. We will repeat the last half of every single verse. Uh, so we'll sing through the verse uh, and go back actually to the, uh, the last two measures, if you know anything about music, the last two measures of that second line and uh, go back to the, go all the way to the end of each verse. And so let us sing together our hymn for today. Uh, Paul and I was thinking of you when I did this. You'll hear when I, well, trust me, when, when you hear the uh, rendition today. How do you get it?
ceasefire these last few days and the release of, of, of prisoners and uh, just pray that these days will continue to last and that uh, hopefully that there can be some type of order restored for your name's sake. We also think that there are places here of danger close to home. Just here in North for sales, a police officer shot the other day. These things are just great tragedy. We're glad that he's okay, but we know that these things uh, every single day Folks are concerned about where they live or maybe concerned about a loved one. And so we just take this opportunity, knowing that you hear our prayers. And so we lift up Chip this day, and he's invited us to pray for him. So we continue to ask your intervention on his behalf for Carrie and Noah, Rocco, Tina, for Jackie, or Aria, Carissa, and Jeff and Judy, Joanne, Mrs. Byers, Cheryl, and Grateful is up and running. And, and doing well and recovering well. We're thankful for that, for Jim, for Mikey, for my mother, Gail. Uh, we just also pray for those with cancer, John and Bob and Mike and Pam, Joseph, Sam, Mikey, and Yazzie, all those who need you, their families as well, that you would be with them. For our partners in faith, our Slovak Zion Synod, our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, and our synodical bishop, uh, Wilma Kucherik, that you continue to bless them and use them but God help them as they lead us to be more faithful servants of yours. And we pray for all shepherds of sheep here on this side of the kingdom, that you would help us be more faithful, that it would not be about our position and power, but let us be generous with what you've given us. We understand it's not about controlling people and not about uh, shepherding people to believe what we believe, but it's shepherding them to Jesus. And let them have their faith and their hope and their trust place in you, not in us and not anything that we say. For Lord, we believe in you, Lord, not in what our pastors and priests teach us, but just the love of God that you have for us. And Lord, whatever else is on our hearts and minds, we just take a moment of prayer to lift all of these concerns to you.
into your hands, O oh Lord. We commend all, all those for whom we pray, and we trust your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Will you please share, share a son of God's peace with all your brothers and sisters? Peace be with you. 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 Peace be Continue to be a reflection of that love. We might be generous with what you've given us. So the church on earth, the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God.
Lord and Savior Jesus give you a shield for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus bless us and keep us in His grace and peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful again for the refreshing gift of new life that we found in Jesus Christ. And praise you. Remind us again of this love that you have for us through these simple elements of bread and wine. That you would come and visit with us. That we might receive your body and your blood. Your strength for this life. And that we might be strengthened and emboldened for your service. For you ask us all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn. Amen. You notice this is an Easter hymn. What better way to end the church year than singing a great hymn of faith? Christ is alive. Christian saint.